I've previously built various omnidirectional vehicles. Those included the machine I built to promote a Lego set which used three standard omnidirectional wheels. We'll talk more about the maths involved in calculating the wheel velocities later in this video, but using a combination of wheel velocities the machine was able to move in any direction as well as rotate. I built another similar machine, but this one used ball shaped wheels which were inspired by a project from Osaka University. Each wheel is made up of two hemispheres and each wheel has one driven axis, just like standard omni wheels. This allowed it to move in any direction or rotate. Neither of these vehicles were particularly good at climbing over objects though. I built various other projects which were much better at climbing over obstacles. In some cases these used rubber tank tracks or other weird wheels like the ped rail machine which had extending feet around its wheel circumferences. Or just a lot of wheels like my actively flexible snake robot which could flex in two axes to get traction and also bridge gaps. But what about if we had a tracked vehicle that was also omnidirectional? In this video I'm going to attempt to make tank tracks which can also slide sideways so we can make a vehicle with three of them arranged just like omni wheels. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So we need to make some sprockets and those are made of a bar which is actually a T5 pulley and some sprocket pieces which screw onto the end of those. So each of those ends fits onto one of those bars and there's two ends per bar so that makes a sprocket to drive both sides of the track. Those are fitted onto some 6mm studding which is bolted all the way through with a couple of nuts on each end done up against each other so they don't come undone. Of course we need some tracks to run on those sprockets so I've printed lots of track links and those all fit together with some 3mm steel bar that fits through both the front and the back and as you can see there's a recess and two tabs in each side so those can all be fitted together to make one long track and we've got 26 segments per track. So putting them all together which took a considerable amount of time we've got a very long track which appears to be quite bendy and seems to be totally suitable for a tracked vehicle. So I'm really happy of how that's come out, it's really very flexible and even if I bend it around a lot it doesn't look like the 3mm pegs are going to come out anytime soon. I actually made several sprockets and sized these by trial and error so I finally got one that runs really well after two or three attempts so that looks like everything's going to be fine to drive those sprockets and they should stay on the tracks without the teeth of the sprockets coming out. But of course to make an omnidirectional vehicle we need to make them slide sideways as well. So I've printed some TPU wheels and there's one fitted in each track segment. And I've made these offset from each other on each side of the track alternatively so that the track gets pretty well supported. So as you can see the track still flexes and now it slides sideways and you can see those little wheels rotating. So hopefully this will be sufficient clearance with the ground on those tracks so that they can slide sideways and work just like omnidirectional wheels. I'm just using some cheap 6 volt motors with gear heads. They've got encoders but I just won't be using those, I'll just be powering them and I've used these in quite a few projects before. Each one has an aluminium bracket and it has some screws to bolt onto the face of the motor. I'm going to be using a belt drive to drive the tracks so I've put a T5 pulley on the motor and let's start assembling the main assembly. So we've got a bit of 3D print here with a bearing in that's going to hold one of the track sprockets and this makes up part of the assembly. Because of the motor in the middle and the clearance with the track we've got a little bridge piece that goes on and allows the motor to poke through. And on the other end is another piece with a bearing in which is going to hold the track on the opposite end of the assembly. So that makes up one side of the assembly and I can now put my two sprockets into my two bearings. As you'd imagine that pulley on the motor is going to be driving one of the sprockets with a belt onto that T5 shaped bar on the sprocket. So now we can put the other side on which again screws onto that motor mount in the middle to hold everything nice and square. It's a 255mm length belt but I trialled and errored the thickness of the motor bracket to get the tension just right. 
I also did the same with the length of the whole thing, so now we can loop that track all the way round, and after a bit of a fiddle, we can put some extra pegs in to attach the two halves together. The track isn't as tight as it could be, but I want it to move freely and that motor to be able to drive it without too much load. So just putting a battery on it, that seems pretty good, and it seems like it runs pretty smoothly. So it drives battles and fords, of course, and I'm pretty happy with that. But I'm a little bit concerned that the little wheels are going to hit the motor bracket that bridges between the two side plates as it goes backwards and forwards, especially at the bottom if I drive over a lump then the track is going to get pushed up and it will probably stall on that bracket when the wheels hit it. So I've installed two little bogey wheels which are basically idlers that are fitted in the bottom there just to hold the track away from that motor bracket. And those are TPU with some spacers and another 3mm axle. So it seems to slide sideways pretty well, so I'm really happy with that. So hopefully this is all going to work out when I use three of them together. And of course I've been building three all along. Those screw onto a triangular chassis as you'd imagine, and basically it's a solid plate on the bottom, and then there's another one to fit on the top to double brace it which has a hole in. But before we can put that together we need to put some electronics in. But first, a quick ad from today's sponsor, Masterworks. What is art? That is the eternal question. In my opinion, art can be anything creative, whether that's a music performance with a fire-breathing robot or paintings and images. Andy Warhol, famous pop artist, said making money is art and working is art and good business is the best art. With work selling for over $100 million, by Andy's definition, he himself is an exceptional artist. And today's sponsor does not only think that making money is art, but they also provide a potential solution to make money in art. When looking for an investment, it's generally something that's stable overall and grows as reliably as predictable. So I was pleasantly surprised to learn about the Art Asset Class Risk Return Profile. The total wealth held in art is estimated to be worth $1.7 trillion, and Deloitte predicts it to grow by $900 billion by 2026. Contemporary art pricing has outpaced the S&P 500 total return by 164% from 1995 to 2021, according to publicly available data, and shows limited correlation to any other major asset class. The only problem? In order to get exposure to this asset class, you need millions of dollars. Until now! Masterworks is the only platform that lets you access their exclusive investments. Masterworks lets you invest in art by names like Warhol, Monet, Basquiat and other iconic artists. Here's how they do it. Masterworks team of art experts analyse over 60,000 data points to find trending artists with high potential for growth. They then go out and acquire works by these artists ranging from $1 million to $30 million. And after filing these works with the SEC as a public offering, investors like me and you can purchase shares representing an investment in those artworks. In just a few clicks you can visit their website, create an account, browse their artwork and start investing in blue chip artworks. You can gain priority access by clicking my link in the description to this video below. It also really supports the channel, so go and check it out. I'm using some IBT4 motor drivers which are more than powerful enough for those motors, and those are three of them fitted in there with space for an Arduino Mega. And I'm using an Arduino Mega because it has lots of PWMs to drive the motor drivers, and still has its SPI pins free for the NRF 24L01 radio chip, and that means I can control this from the OpenDog 3 remote which I use for lots of other projects. I've wired the 6 PWM wires to the three motor drivers, so all we need to do now is put some power on it and write some code. So I've got two 7.4 volt LiPos in parallel which should power everything, so now all we need to do is sort out the wheel velocities. Driving forwards or backwards is easy because we can just drive two of the tracks in one direction and ignore the other one which will slide sideways. Rotating is also easy because we can move all of the tracks in the same direction. However, if we want to drive directly sideways we need to get all of the tracks moving at the right velocity. That's pretty easy to work out though because we can just draw a right angle triangle with one side being where the track would be if it was straight and the other being where it actually is which is rotated 60 degrees. Then we can just use trigonometry to work out the ratio. In this case it's a cosine of 60 degrees which is 0.5. So this line is half the length of this one. That means that the straight track needs to run 50% faster than the ones at an angle. This may seem odd because they're not facing straight sideways, so you'd imagine that they would need to run faster to keep up with the straight wheel. But in reality the angle of these wheels causes the robot to twist in its vertical yaw axis, so we need to run the straight track faster to untwist it. 
So I've coded all that up and now if I push the stick forward and backwards we can drive forward and backwards with two tracks and the other one sliding sideways. If we drive sideways they should all move at the right velocity to move directly sideways and I can also rotate by twisting the other stick which causes them all to run in the same direction around in a circle. And of course all those mix together because there's one sum that puts all of the velocities in for all of the sticks mixed to all of the tracks. So my sideways calculation appears to have worked out and it's driving as near as possible in a straight line with all three tracks moving. But of course I can mix all of the other motions in as well and rotate when I drive or drive forwards and backwards and sideways at the same time while rotating or any combination I'd like to do. It drives pretty well on carpet so I'm happy those little wheels on the tracks have got clearance. It's actually quite driverable and quite manoeuvrable. But we wanted something that would drive over obstacles, so first of all I'm going to try this 12mm piece of plywood, which should be easy, right? Well, it appears that it's not very easy, and no matter how I try, I can't get both of those tracks to drive up over it. And the problem seems to be that as soon as the front of the track lifts off the ground, the back of the track's lifted as well, because it's pivoted against that back track that would make it go sideways, and that track doesn't drive actively, forwards and backwards it only moves when I want to twist or drive sideways so if I kind of twist the thing around I can get one track up then the other tracks lifted off the ground and it just keeps rotating no matter what I do no matter how hard I try I can't drive over the piece of plywood so I thought the TPU wheels would give me some grip because that actually makes the tracks quite grippy but of course those aren't straight on with the edge so they don't actually touch it and don't help it climb up It'd be far better if the whole tracks were TPU as well and had some more grips on. We'd have to be really careful they didn't restrict the movement sideways in the other axis. So it's been an interesting experiment and I'd love to make one that's life-size that I could ride on, but it probably wouldn't be very good off-road. This reminds me a lot of the ball wheels omnidirectional robot which dealt fine with low obstacles like a bit of coiled up mains lead on the ground and initially it looked like it was going to be quite good at multi-terrain. However anything with a bit of an edge caused real problems because as soon as those wheels came off the ground of course the passive wheel behind the third wheel doesn't have any drive in that direction so it can't help push it along and push it up. Now I did have some TPU grips on these wheels which are the white parts but that didn't really seem to help me, probably again because the wheels are at an angle, so we never get those grippy parts straight on with the edge of the piece that I'm trying to climb over. So again, an utterly terrible failure for multi-terrain, so we need another solution which I'll investigate in the future. Well, I'm pretty happy that I made an omnidirectional tracked vehicle, but obviously multi-terrain isn't very good. Perhaps another configuration could be better, like an H shape. So we have two tracks at the side and one across the middle, so it could still go sideways and still go over obstacles like a normal tank with the two tracks on the side, although we might as well just use a normal tank at that point, and the track in the middle would easily get grounded by other obstacles, which it wouldn't be able to climb over sideways, so it kind of defeats the object. I'm going to publish all the CAD and code for this if you want to have a go and see if you can make a better one. So all of that's on GitHub and the link's in the description to the video. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links in the description to this video as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early, including sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. Alright, that's all for now.